Well, the negative impact of seawalls on Hawaii's shoreline is pretty well documented. So why is a South Korean businessman being allowed to build a new one in Kahala? KITV force Andrew Pereira has been tracking developments and joins us now with the story. Andrew. Well, Yeonji and Paula, billionaire Kun Hee Lee is chairman of the Samsung Group, and just last month he received city council approval to erect a modified seawall at his new property in Kahala. Japanese billionaire Genshiro Kawamoto is gone, and so is the seawall that used to front his Kahala property. The state required removal of the wall to establish the proper shoreline setback. The shoreline setback requirement is always in effect when someone wants to build in the shoreline setback. And that's about 40 feet? In most properties, it's 40 feet, but not all properties. The new owner of these two narrow lots in Kahala is also a billionaire, Kun Hee Lee of South Korea. Lee is investing as much as $20 million to build a 16,000 square foot home, including the new seawall known as a revetment. Revetments are always the preferred alternative because they do not uh, create that wave refraction and reflection that a vertical wall would. Now, once that shoreline setback was established, the city council unanimously approved construction of a modified seawall. That, after the Department of Planning and Permitting said Mr. Lee could lose as much of a foot of his property every year to erosion, and that erosion could impact neighbors without construction of that seawall. As with many of these shoreline properties, they're never clear cut, they're never black and white. Dolan Eversall is the Coastal Storms Project Coordinator for the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College. He says although no seawall is more desirable, the fact that Mr. Lee was forced to build a new one at the true high water mark is encouraging. Lee has already lost more than 10 feet of his property. What's happening now is by removing the old wall and letting the shoreline move landward, it's making room for a new beach. Eversall says if Mr. Lee moved the new sloping seawall farther inland, the beach directly in front would grow even wider. However, that could result in nearby properties being compromised. And by doing that, it will eventually erode and flank both neighbors' seawalls. So there's an engineering fact factor in there that needs to be considered. With seawalls already in place throughout Kahala, it's probably too late to save or restore any beaches. But Eversol says regulatory agencies should take a different approach when it comes to seawalls at Hawaii's so-called legacy beaches. The reality is some beaches probably deserve a little bit more scrutiny and protection and like you said, not allowing that first wall to go in because it really does create a domino effect. We would be much more reticent to uh, approve a seawall or revetment on a top tier beach. Now, since 2010, the Department of Planning and Permitting has received 39 applications for shoreline setback variances. Of those, 19 were approved, 3 were denied, and 10 were reject rejected for incomplete applications. That's the latest. Paul and Yunji will send it back to you.